what's going on welcome back to the channel chat here back with another update on the altel nano plus there's been a big update for uh, both the nano series and the light series so i'm just going to go over the um, nano plus because that's the only drone i have so we know this drone was released a little bit early and a few of us uh, received it with um, not too many features now the app update is version 1.1.5 and you have to download it before you can download uh, firmware version 1.1.7. So what are the new features added in this package of updates? It adds 24, 25, 48, and 50 frames per second on video shooting. It also adds a estimated number of photos remaining on your SD card and internal memory, 50 megapixel photo resolution, a manual focus feature, a photo timestamp feature, an image transmission pillar box blurring option, and it added a camera parameter display in pro mode. It also added some other optimizations, which you have to refer to the Altel website uh, for that information. All right, so today is a very cold and windy day. So what we're gonna do is go outside and uh, I'm gonna sit in my car and fly the drone and hover over my house. I'm not gonna be able to find these winds. So uh, what I'm gonna do is just go through the menu and show you um, where all everything is and make sure all the features are there. And in a later video, we're gonna test all these out and make sure they work. So uh, let's go outside. All right, so I'm gonna start out by hovering above my home. It is quite windy out here and uh, I will put the wind conditions on the screen, but a uh, speed uh, update to the speed would have definitely helped in this situation. And we did not get a speed update. So um, here we are. So immediately here on the first screen, you notice that you have your toggle button for your manual focus and auto focus. Now, if you click the manual focus on, uh, you'll be able to adjust your focal distance uh, by sliding your finger up and down the screen. You can use this to isolate a subject uh, when either taking photo or video uh, by zooming in and focusing on that subject and blurring out the background. All right, so moving on to video mode, you now have uh, the ability to adjust your frame rates. You have all the frame rates that are there. In 4K, you have 30 frames per second, 25 frames per second, and 24 frames per second. In 2.7K, you also have the same, which is 30, 25, and 24 frames per second. However, in 1080p, you have a little bit more, which is 60 frames per second, 50, 48, 30, 25, and 24 frames per second. All right, so let's take a look at photo mode. So you get your usual single burst timer and auto exposure bracketing. We now have the option to shoot 50 megapixel photos. However, it's only available in JPEG format. And we also have the 12 and a half megapixel option and the 4K option, which were there before. Portrait mode, quick shots, hyperlapse, and pano all appear to be the same. However, there has been some changes in pro mode. You have your automatic, manual, and shutter priority. So at this point, uh, the wind picked up the drone and started pushing it backwards uh, without me even realizing it. Before I knew it, I was over my neighbor's backyard or hovering over my neighbor's backyard. So I quickly recovered and pushed the drone full stick forward. I had to lower altitude slightly uh, so I can um, get out of that wind current and uh, push full stick forward and got it back. All right guys, so at this point, I decided to bring the drone down and um, hover it over my driveway about five feet in the air. Now the Nano is not able to handle these type of winds. Uh, if I have my Mini up in the air, I'm pretty sure it will be able to handle it. But this is the Nano and it does struggle in the wind. And uh, I had to bring it down so I can continue the uh, demonstration. So uh, here you go. All right, so picking up where we left off, if you tap on the Pro tab again, you'll see that it'll bring up your settings here on the bottom. You have your shutter speed, your ISO, your EV, and your white balance. You also have an estimated time of how long you can record on your uh, SD card. And if you switch over to photos, it also gives you an estimated count of how many photos you can take. But one thing I wish Autel would have added was a manual meter. Now a manual meter will give me a readout of what my exposure is when I'm filming in manual mode. Now as of right now, there's no way of telling what your exposure is when you're filming in manual mode. 
The EV value that is here on the screen is basically used for automatic and shutter priority. And when you're in manual mode, that value doesn't change. Going inside the camera menu, you'll see that there are a couple changes. Now you have the ability to add a timestamp to your photos or videos, and you can also add a custom watermark. It looks like all the image transmission settings are available now. Uh, prior to this, we were only able to shoot in smooth setting, but now we are able to shoot in smooth HD and 2.7K. But it is limited to specific settings depending on the resolution and frame rate that you're filming in. And right underneath that, you have the image transmission background effect. And if you toggle this on, it'll give this dark area of your display a uh, blurry glass effect. Okay, so it seems to be some pretty good features, uh, but we did not get everything. So I'm hoping uh, that they'll push out some more updates in the near future. Uh, like another week or so. It seems like they've been pushing them out every week or so. So um, hopefully uh, we get something else soon. So as I mentioned before, stay tuned for another video where I test out all these features. I'll try to get that out as soon as possible or as soon as the weather cooperates. But until then, check out this playlist right here that I have set up just for the Nano. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.